But anyway, it's very uh, good that the last talk, the last philosophical talk, comes from a person who is responsible that I was so stupid to come to the United States because he invited me to, in, when he started the Philosophy and Technology Studies Center in New York at Polytechnic University. And he was so impressed or so angered by my talk about what, what was it, privacy, I think, <laughs> that he said, okay, let's somebody uh, get him over this. So he is in America well known as a philosopher of technology. He was in New York a long time, but then he went back to Colorado. So now he is a mountain, mountain philosopher. <laughs> and he was kind of not always happy, and certainly never really happy with academic philosophy. For that, he shared his antipathy to this kind of drones. Uh, but and nowadays, he calls himself a public intellectual more than a philosopher, trying to address questions of concern for many people, not just for a few, and tries to apply what he learned in the philosophy years. So a philosopher very close to the world. Welcome, Karl Michel. Okay, I'm supposed to, I, I, I can talk for about how long? Uh, one hour. What? One hour. Okay. Uh, well, uh, up to one hour. Up to, up to one hour. Okay. Well, I'm going to hold it. I'm going to hold it under an hour. Um, the uh, I, I always appreciate being able to come here. Thank you, Wolfgang. Once again, uh, Wolfgang and I, as he mentioned, have shared a uh, a long and interesting uh, intersecting careers over the over a number of years, um, and I am. Uh, really amazed at what he's been able to to create here with EGS and so it's a it's a pleasure and an honor to be able to have a, make a small uh, micro contribution um, Wolfgang always asks me when I when I come here to give a talk do something really philosophical right uh, because uh, sometimes I don't do things that at least Wolfgang considers really philosophical um, I, I tend to as I been telling my students in my class, channel other philosophers, and we channeled a lot of Dewey and uh, uh, Hans Jonas and, and stuff. Um, this paper that I'm going to share with you tonight is, is, is long and somewhat complex, and I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm going to do pieces of it. But it, it's grown out of two, two experiences um, that I'll share as kind of background. Um, one is um, uh, the experience of 911. Now, I, I was not in New York at the time, uh, or in Washington D.C., but um, that that has stimulated me to try to rethink a lot of things that that a lot of commitments in my life, personal commitments that uh, were shaken by that experience. Uh, being in America. Um, the primary one is one that Wolfgang and I actually haven't talked about, but as he's mentioned on a number of occasions to people, I've been a Catholic for a number of years, um, but it really shook my Catholicism. Um, and the reason is, is because I, I became convinced that the, the, the violence that was being rationalized by an appeal to a certain form of, of Islam, uh, Islamist ideology, was really reflective not just of Islam, but of all three Abrahamic religions, uh, uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And in reflecting on this, I realized that, that I had been trying to rationalize some of the, the violent uh, aspects of my own tradition, uh, Catholicism, in ways that I should re-examine. Um, particularly uh, things like uh, the, 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 uh, the Psalms the, are, are, are replete with uh, cursings, uh, which I, I had been taught to interpret metaphorically. Uh, you know, would that God would allow 
the, the, the dashing of my enemy's children's heads on the rock. Uh, well, they, I was supposed to interpret that as, in a metaphorical sense, as, you know, uh, dash my sins the, my, my, uh, on, on, the, on the rock. But the more I thought about this, the more I thought that there was something artificial about that. And uh, uh, I decided that I did not any longer want to associate myself with the Catholic or Christian tradition. Uh, now it's kind of an odd, I know from saying this to other people, it's kind of odd to think this uh, as a result of 911. Uh, but it did seem to me to reveal in ways that I had been trying to ignore a kind of uh, built-in commitment to rationalization, justification of violence, which I then began, began to find throughout my own tradition. Uh, and as a result of that, I wound up uh, uh, ceasing to uh, be a Catholic and joined a Buddhist temple. Uh, and since then, I've been trying to figure out, I, I, I find, I'm, a, I'm really, I'm uneasy calling myself a Buddhist uh, because I really haven't had the kind of, of long-term training and uh, I didn't grow up in a Buddhist tradition uh, and I don't know that much about Buddhism, uh, but I found a kind of, of better spiritual community in a Jodo Shinshu uh, temple in Denver. Um, it's primarily Japanese. Uh, these are people who were, the, the priest was actually born in one of the internment camps in the United States uh, during the Second World War. Uh, so they have experienced firsthand the kind of violence that my country uh, perpetrates on other people. Uh, that's given me an opportunity to, to talk with people and to learn and to, to begin to have some sense of a different perspective on the culture that I'm a part of, as well as the religion that I was previously a part of. So, as a result, I began to try to, to think out, and um, I'm at work on a larger book on uh, technology and religion, uh, but a piece of it has to do with in what ways Buddhism might be able to help us think a little bit more about technology and politics. Now, this particular paper that I'm going to share here grew out of another experience post-911. Uh, Canada, in, 19, in 2003, opened the largest synchrotron uh, it's a, uh, a high energy particle accelerator in North America. Uh, it was built in, uh, in Alberta, Canada. And as part of the, the celebration of the creation of this new high energy physics tool, they wanted to have a, uh, a scholarly conference uh, celebrating uh, the new uh, high energy synchrotron. And for some reason, I, I got invited to do that. And the theme of the, the, the conference was uh, public science in a liberal democracy. Uh, and the, the goal was to try to, to figure out ways to, to justify or rationalize, promote the goodness of science, particularly public science, that's publicly funded science, in a liberal democracy. I have grave doubts about this, that this is a good thing. Um, and uh, as I mentioned in class, the, 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 the section of the federal budget in the United States, this is also true in Canada, and it's to some extent it's true in Europe, um, that is truly discretionary, that the legislature has some, some ability to, to vote it up or vote it down, the largest single piece of that discretionary budget has to do with science and technology. 